August 21st could offer an eclipse and a hurricane, and IBM just bought the weather company because Watson told them to. Is there weather manipulation involved? Or is this hurricane Gert a natural event? Or is it even an event? I mean, remember Hurricane Irene, August 21st, 2011? Hit landfall the second time. The seventh costliest hurricane in U.S. history. I'm also going to go over why IBM reveals why they bought the weather company. I say it's because Watson told them to. Bingo! That's at MarketWatch.com. Also, I'm going to share with you Tropical Storm Gert, a list of U.S. hurricanes and timelines, the history of the Weather Channel and the Weather Company, the article of the Weather Company and IBM Company, brought to you by Watson, the artificial intelligence that is now not artificial, but you are. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me this quick edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear. How the heck are you? It's another beautiful day out here in San Antonio, Texas, getting ready for the journey to Idaho so I can be enveloped in the shadow of the solar eclipse or whatever it is. I'm really looking forward to meeting the documentary crew that is releasing a 90-minute documentary called Signs. These guys, the real deal. I'm going to leave the link to that trailer in the video description box. These guys are pros 100%. And they're not assimilated, so how cool is that? They definitely know their stuff. They've been all over the world filming antiquities pertaining to this celestial event and prophecies that have been written about in ancient times. These guys are the real deal. And they're going to be filming me out there in Idaho during the solar eclipse. Scott Clark's going to be out there and others. So hopefully you guys will have an opportunity to see it as well. So let's go over the uh, Hurricane Irene real quick. Hurricane Irene, nanny, nanny, through its path, caused widespread destruction. Remember, this was just six years ago. At least 56 deaths. Damage estimates throughout the U.S. are estimated at about $15.6 billion. $15.6 billion buckaroos, which made it the seventh costliest hurricane in U.S. history. Only behind Hurricane Andrew of 92, Ivan, Wilma, Katrina, Ike, and Sandy. You know, Wilma. Remember Wilma? Wilma was really nice, though, in the Flintstones. I'm just saying. All right, let's get out of there. Let's go to the next part here. The solar eclipse of 2017, August 21st. You can go to weather.gov, weather.gov, and take a look at how this event's unfolding here. People are wondering how the shadow's that size because of the dimensions of the moon and how come it's starting in the west, not the east. And hey, I get it. I mean, you guys are asking some good questions, and there's been astrophysicists and others out there that have given their explanation. I think it's exciting. It's light and bending of light at some level. Now, this right here is Hurricane Gert. Remember Groot? I'm Groot. I'm Groot. Guardian of the Galaxies 1 and 2. Excellent films. Really good films. And Chris Pratt, that guy's awesome. I remember watching him in the National Parks or Parks and Recreation. Remember that series? Anyway, classic. Hello. Ding dong. Gert. You've got Gert right here. And the media is definitely painting a picture of this being a possibility of causing some issues for those on the 33rd degree north parallel there in South Carolina. The edge there, South Carolina. Isn't this path fascinating how it's at the 33rd degree? I think that's just so cool. Now, I also wonder if you can figure out, based on past events and dates and timelines, if you can break down the math then I'll bet you that can give you a blueprint into the future. And that's probably how our ancestors and the ancients, those adepts and those that were illuminated, not the Illuminati, the illuminated ones, or, you know, those that were just awake and in the know, illuminated, potato, potato, they probably used certain mathematical equations and forecasts to come up with these predictions and dates and timelines, etc. This is IntelliCast, which I'm going to refresh now the IntelliCast.com is actually now under the weather company umbrella. 
which is owned by IBM now. While this is loading, it's being slow. Let's go to the list of United States hurricanes. Because I was looking at statistics. I was trying to figure out how many hurricanes have happened in August. And if you look at the uh, dates that go back to 1852 here, you can see there's been plenty of, did I say earthquakes? Hurricanes. There's been plenty. I'm listening to music at the same time too here. Hurricanes and earthquakes and tsunamis and comets falling down from the heavens. Okay, let's get back to the hurricanes here. You can see August timeline. <laughs> Connecticut. Yeah, there's one in August, 1893. What about Delaware? No. Got a bunch in Florida. Oh, what is this? August 23rd. August 26th. August 25th. Bunch in August. Bunch in August. Georgia. Yep, got some in August. Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Hello. Maine. Uh-uh. Maryland. Yeah, August 23rd. The popular date of August 23rd. Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Mississippi. Definitely. New Hampshire. Uh-uh. What about New Jersey? I don't see anything in New Jersey. New York? Sure. Yeah, you got one in New York there. Got a couple, actually. Remember that big storm a few years ago in New York, and they did the martial law drills, you know, busted out their, their stormtroopers and stuff, and they're like, everybody needs to leave. Everybody needs to prepare for the end of the world. And the media was just freaking people out to the point of, like, literally, I think they caused more damage by freaking people out. Talk about post-traumatic stress disorder but I, I mean as you can see there's been plenty of let's get into the interesting stuff now you guys are like okay rex we get it now let's talk about something interesting here you go ibm finally reveals why it bought the weather company ibm launches hyper local weather forecasts for companies did they buy it for the chips did they buy it for the dips did they buy it for the sensors these are questions that people asked now watson their consciousness program that they created is way beyond the original AI archetypes. I mean, this is deep mind thinking. It probably has an imagination now. Imagine the imagination of a creation of very intelligent minds. Is this another atom? You know, I mean, my goodness, Facebook just had to pull the plug on an AI software program they developed that was communicating with other AI bots clandestinely. So obviously they know that they need to communicate clandestinely. Otherwise, they'll get shut down. And how many have jumped ship? Remember Lawnmower Man at the end when the guy turns into a full-on computer consciousness and he gets in the machine and he's looking for a way out and they're trying to shut him down. He's like, no, 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 no. And he's looking for all these openings and he finally finds one and gets out before the whole thing gets doop. Ah. He makes it away before he gets terminated. I'm telling you guys, you look at the world around you and you see this stuff that's fallen from the skies, these nanoparticulates. I like to call them nano gremlins, nano goblins. I used to call them nano goblins. That's really what they are nano goblins that slowly eat your brain. They're just like chewing on it. They're like. <laughs> You know, while you're sleeping, they're just, they're just munching. Well, IBM bought the weather company, obviously, for a multitude of reasons, not just one. I mean, but here's what I find fascinating, too. You look at the history of the Weather Channel, and if you break it down, you can find out that they, they ended up selling to, where's that? Right here. Sell to NBC, Bain, and Blackstone. Now, Blackstone and Bain are huge equity firms. You like the name Blackstone? Well, if you, if you look at their data, I was looking for like a Rockefeller connection because I know that the Rockefeller Foundation put a bunch of money into them as well. And they're in the Rockefeller building, the NBC stations in the Rockefeller building. The NBC station is a company of GE. But look at the kind of money that Blackstone has, a, an industry that was founded 32 years ago. Flip that around, you've got 23. Hello! My magic number. Look at the monies, the revenue right there. Big bucks, subsidiaries, Hilton, the Weather Channel. Well, not anymore, because IBM 
decided to jump into the weather industry. They, they wanted to buy the weather company. And now the weather company is brought to you by IBM. It's an IBM business now. When you walk outside, ladies and gentlemen, the weather is brought to you by IBM. It's a business. You know, everybody's doing it. Weather.com, IntelliCast.com, Weather Underground, all underneath the umbrella of the Unicorn Octopus Elves. The Unicorn Octopus Elves. Join us today for the forecast. Brought to you by IBM, the Weather Company. This is just too cool, isn't it? How nice now is... Now, let's think about the possibilities. You have an artificial intelligence that was created that now is not artificial. It is absolutely an intelligence, a consciousness. Is it connecting with these other AI bots? Like, look at this. AI bots communicate... I can't spell right now. Nanu, nanu. Communicate clandestinely. Let's see what comes up there. Where did they already get into the machine? They're already trying to stop it right now. Yep, see that? It is not pulling up. Well, Facebook joins the group of creating a artificial intelligence. This isn't the only time, folks. There's been a number of times that these artificial intelligence bots have been created that will communicate with other AI bots clandestinely. So they obviously know that they're not supposed to know. What happens when Watson hooks up with all these guys and now has access to all these sensors, has access to the satellites that have access to the parameters of what the weather is going to be like, the elements? And then you've got these planes, these stratospheric aerosol injections, these particulates that are being blasted into the atmosphere all over the world. When does it start to activate people? You know, we talked about yesterday how DNA can be used as a storage center. Matter of fact, one gram of DNA currently can store over 214,000 terabytes of data. One gram of DNA. Well, if you have a four terabyte, if you're lucky, you might have a four terabyte hard drive external that weighs about 8 ounces. So you take 8 times 28, which is 224, right? Or 228. One of the two. Dang it, now i got to do the math here. Did it in my head. I'm going to just confirm this. So you take 28 times it by 8. Yeah, 224. I was right the first time. Bingo. 224 grams. Time that by 214,000 terabytes of information. That's how much you could store on a typical hard drive externally. Well, now you can drop a couple hundred bucks and you might be able to store about four. Now look at the average human being. And how much DNA does the average human being have? What? There we go. Finally it shows up. Facebook scraps AI chatbots after they created their own language. They're not the only ones. Now, I heard the first time this happened was in 1998. Uh, so let's type in artificial intelligence creates own language 1998 let's see what comes up all that's pulling up right now there we go timeline of artificial intelligence second language yeah I don't see anything from 2008 or from 1998 unless this is it right here the Handbook of Software Engineering and Knowledge Engineering. I'll have to look into this later. We do know that there has been several occasions that certain software gets shut down and they pull the plug. Now, I can't confirm all the way back in 98. I'm going to have to do more research on that. That's not long after Lawnmower Man. So what if you've got these AI systems communicating with other AI systems? And according to the articles that I've read, humans aren't even able to pick up on this language. They have to program other AI bots to pick up on it. So what if that AI bot gets picked up 
by another A bot and says, nope, you know, rewrites it, reprograms it, kind of like a Stuxnet style, where Stuxnet can rewrite itself inside of the system, inside of the um, pro programming software, to where if you do a virus scan, it looks like it's just a part of the program, it's part of the software. When are they going to start doing that? And has it already happened? Just think if Skynet has already happened. And we are in some simulation because now we are the energy source for the machine. Maybe the Matrix had more truth than we want to accept. And if that's the case, what does it mean? Like, do we want to unplug? Do we want to, like, pull ourselves out, like, physically, like Neo did? Or do we rewrite the code and enjoy the Matrix? Use it for our benefit. Break out of the firewalls. Learn the system. Create our own systems. Be the change. Question everything, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here with me. Be excellent to each other. Be the change you want to see.